The way I figure it, everyone gets a miracle. And we begin with a random voiceover that sounds more like you invited an annoying friend who decided to start talking just as the movie started. Why is this family just now pulling up and the movers have already unloaded half their stuff? Is it typical for movers to just start moving someone into a house without the homeowners being there? This may not be a sin, I may not be rich enough to understand how hiring movers works. This kid is just really focused on dribbling practice, which is fair, he clearly is terrible at it. Of all the houses, and all the subdivisions, and all the state of Florida... So it's like Casablanca, only pathetic. Margot Roth Spiegelman. This character's name perfectly sums up this movie, a desperate over-the-top attempt to be adorable. That's a good way to make friends, Quentin. Awkwardly and somewhat angrily stare at the new neighbor girl. You can tell her parents don't love her because she's not wearing a helmet. Or you could read this like he's a f***ing dork. Either way works. There's a dead body holding a gun that no one in this neighborhood noticed. Everyone in this neighborhood is either super lazy, collectively plotted to kill this man and staged it as a suicide, or just extremely non-observant. Did this guy shoot himself in the chest? Who shoots themselves in the chest? Since this is supposed to be a cute movie, I guess it would be kind of graphic for them to find a guy with the back of his head blown out. I thought you closed your eyes when you died. And the rest of this movie does not chronicle her life as a serial killer. Following the great tradition of childhood friends in fiction, no one ever uses a door. The kids always come in through a window. His wife works at SeaWorld. I bet there's a clue. Someone needs to fill in Poirot Jr. on the fact that you don't really need clues to solve a suicide. He's almost 11. There are plenty of objections as to why they shouldn't look into this that come to mind before SeaWorld is closed. All the strings inside him broke. This is something that sounds profound but means absolutely nothing. What is she trying to prove by looking into this? Her strings breaking comment seems like she has a purpose, but I am no closer to knowing what her motivation is. Margot always loved mysteries. Maybe she loved them so much, she became one. They are desperately trying to set up an allure around this child who is simply entitled and a meddler. And that concludes one of the most pointless cold opens to a movie I've ever seen. If you haven't seen this movie, first of all, don't. But second of all, we don't hear about the guy who killed himself in the neighborhood ever again. No one has ever taught this kid how to brush teeth. He's not using toothpaste, he's just sticking it in the back of his mouth and he's walking around his bedroom like it's a place where you brush teeth. But does he think that's Margot at the door? He saw her walk out of his view maybe one second before the doorbell rang. Maybe she is such a mystery, she has the ability to alter the properties of space-time. If Margot is this brooding, mysterious loner type, why is she so popular and hanging out with all the preppy cool kids? Maybe that's a part of the mystery. Margot was... special. By special, he means hot. Like the time she spent three weeks traveling with the circus. Margot obviously has no parents if she can just run off to the circus at 12. And can tour with some band I've never heard of, only to reject the bassist who is inexplicably with an earshot of the bouncer at the backstage door. I'm just insulted by this clue. So her soup would have to already be cooked and sitting on the table with no one around, had the correct number of I's, S's, and P's, and she would have had to get them all in order and they would have had to stay in order before her sister got back to eat it, who clearly didn't notice it until she went to eat it. But the biggest thing is, this is not a clue. This is just her telling her sister where she's going. She probably should have just written it on a sticky note and put that on her bowl. Or anyone else she deemed worthy. I was never one of those people. Why would you be? You're the weird helmet-wearing neighbor boy who was afraid to look at a dead body. Margot surpassed you before she was 13. She doesn't even tell her ghost parents she's apparently run away to Mississippi, but she's gonna tell you. Hi Ben, hi Radar. And Radar? Are these teens big MASH fans? It's the 21st century. Shouldn't this cliche nerd nickname be something like Torrent or JPEG? You know, I feed her grapes, think of her pears. Treat her like a princess she is. Was that wrong? It's weird. It's always weird. His persistence about wanting to bang Q's mom is high enough for it to be strange that Q is not more annoyed by it. Radar's parents were trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest collection of black Santas in one house. Notice he said trying. Is there another family with a house filled with black Santas? I think that's the sadder story here, that they have not yet succeeded in having the most black Santas. I need to borrow your car. I can't use your car. A boy this weak-willed and boner sore for the same girl since he was a little kid would not have immediately turned this girl down. Nine problems. And your boyfriend is one of them? Someone has been reading Jay-Z's throwaway song ideas journal. He agrees to go and commit several actual crimes with the girl who has basically ignored him for nine years. <laughs> You can make mundane acts like pulling a car out of a driveway way more epic and life-changing if you throw some electronic music under it. How did Q's parents not hear him peel out in their Honda Odyssey in the middle of the night, and after Margot's parents were loudly screaming her name? Follow-up sin, they are not telling me what sleeping pills Q's parents are taking. We are righting wrongs, and after that we're gonna wrong some rights. Pretentious teenagers are terrible, don't get me wrong, but not even the most vegan of the Beret Brigade would utter a sentence so trite. This is gonna be the best night of your life. Margot is selfish, meddling, and now we can add cocky. She's really shaping up to be a really lovable character. Pull in here. She had to tell him where to go, even though she told him where they were going like five seconds earlier. I like I'm going to Duke in the fall, then go to med school and become an oncologist. And, you know, obviously get married and have kids by like 30. And then you'll be happy. I mean, yeah, probably. That sounds like a pretty good life. I bet college was fun too. Oh. 
I'm pretty sure those don't just work right off the shelf. I'm a big believer in random capitalization. She would be very popular on AOL Instant Messenger in the early 2000s. This Florida subdivision is close to a big box store that sells individually packaged whole catfish. Still weird. That's an awfully judgmental cashier. If they were in such a hurry, I probably would have sent them for not asking for the manager. I'll do it anyway. Margo, this is a bad idea. Q didn't have any wherewithal to know this was a bad idea when Margo crawled into his room in the middle of the night. We bring the rain down on our enemies. Are we sure Margo didn't kill that man from the beginning of the movie? Did he really get that far away from his clothes to not quickly grab some pants at least? He conveniently stops covering his tiny dick just in time for Q to snap a picture of his tiny dick. Also, congratulations, our heroes have now lightheartedly engaged in the deplorable act of revenge porn. The Rhode Island of penises. Was that really the best thing that presumably a team of writers could come up with? Maybe the director just told the model slash actress playing Margot just to wing it. The fact that she put a large fish just out in her backpack is also a prank on her. Now her backpack and all its contents probably reek of fish. Does she think she's Zoro? At least that wasn't his real name. It's like she wants to make super sure everyone knows she did all this, and leave behind enough evidence for her parents to press charges, which none of them do. How long does it take these grown-ass adults to come downstairs? This house must be massive and contain large, sprawling staircases for them to have enough time to get back outside. We bring the rain, not the scattered showers. How many eye-roll moments am I going to have when Margo says something? Did she have that one in her pocket for a while? They're doing a lot of standing around for two people trying to be inconspicuous. Apparently none of these large houses in this upscale development have security systems. They got incredibly lucky. They were able to pick the lock without an alarm going off, casually walk upstairs with no one seeing or hearing them, and now they're just standing on the foot of this guy's bed like they've got all the time in the world. Chuck told all the girls not to dance with you, and we all went along with it. She's such a free spirit and a rebel even at a young age, but she still listened to and complied with what this guy told her to do in the sixth grade. What do I regret more? This is not the right place for this pep talk. This is a movie based on a book written by a man, directed by a man, with a screenplay written by two men. And it's pretty obvious that none of them are aware that, in fact, Nair burns your skin like f***ing hell. We're ninjas! I guess you can claim to be a ninja when everyone you're messing with is taking the same high-quality brand of sleeping pills. Needlessly sliding across the hood of a car, in case you forgot she was supposed to be a badass. Come to Orlando! It looks like everywhere else. You too can feel winsome freedom by sticking your head out of the window like a dog. I can't get arrested tonight. Or ever. Q doesn't understand that all these things he did tonight could get him arrested later. Soothing sounds of corporate America. They have random Muzak playing in this conference room, which not only would it not be playing in the middle of the night, it definitely would be playing in a conference room. The people telling the story couldn't have picked a city with a better skyline. Correction, a skyline. I think we're in the clear. Because if someone doesn't catch you in the act of committing a crime, or shortly after, you can't be charged for that crime. Wait, that's not right. Ah, the old reflection signifies duplicity trick. It's a paper town. Roll credits. I've lived here 11 years, and... I've never come across anyone that cares about anything that matters. No one in the whole city of Orlando? You spent most of that time either in high school or in your subdivision, but I promise there are people in Orlando running soup kitchens and sh**. This is her way of saying goodbye, when she could have just actually said goodbye and we could have avoided the rest of what happens in the movie, which is more of an inconvenience for the character and also me. This just further proves that she's an asshole. Some dream you must have been having. Why even do this? Why introduce for one split second a fake out it was all a dream scenario? Q must have set the picture of this guy's tiny dick as his lock screen background. That's the only explanation for being able to show him that photo that quickly. Every person he's walking by is running into him. Is everyone moping around this school, not paying attention to their surroundings because Margo is missing? So this town does have law enforcement. I'm guessing he is here to arrest Q for trespassing, breaking and entering, and vandalism. Not your top candidates for parents of the year. Character in the movie casually mentions in voiceover how sh** your parents are, when the three weeks Margot spent at the circus was more than enough information. I'm like, yo, what's up? Let's do it. It's bad enough that we have to listen to this sub Anthony Michael Hall wax poetic about imaginary sex, but does he have to try and talk like this too? There's something in Margot's window. It's a refrigerator, a mug, author Dan Brown, Michelangelo's David? Oh no, wait, it's obviously a picture. Every album ever made except Woody Guthrie. That's a bold statement to make when he's only looked through a small portion of her records. This is a perfect example of Margot's trite, white, teenaged ass. Using a photo of Woody Guthrie to lead someone to Wilco. If you think her favorite bits of leaves of grass are self-involved, wait until you see her annotated version of Atlas Shrugged. Walt Whitman's from New York. Woody Guthrie lived in New York for a while. Maybe that's something. Think she's in New York? Two famous people lived in New York. Somehow he rightly interprets that as a clue. He just happens to look over at the hinges on his door and sees a little piece of paper that just happened to stay there for several days. We have school tomorrow. I if we don't show up. Is this a moment of growth for Q? It seems more like this girl is dragging him down to her selfish level of apathy. It was a little too easy for Q to convince his friends, who also never do anything wrong, to skip class. We got no time to waste. <laughs> huh? See? I can't tell if that voice is Sean Connery or Tom Brokaw or Jimmy Stewart. Last time I was this scared, I just slept in my mom's bed. Q, if I were you, I'd get that scared every single night. You should know better than to set him up like that. 
Maybe Q also secretly thinks his mom is hot, and hearing Ben say things like this is the only way for Q to express his true feelings. What if it's Margo? But what if it's literally anything else? This statement includes more things that are less threatening, i.e. woodland critters or a tumbleweed, so it's not a valid argument for why they should leave. I'm starting to think these three characters are the only ones who are in band. I also think that there's no band director, because no teacher has been curious as to why three students hang out in the band room after school every day. If there's nope. a tuba there, it's not a party. Or maybe it's the craziest party you've ever been to in your life. We know that this is a dream because Margot would never wear a dress like that. It might not be a dream because she probably would wear a hoodie over it. Hey, how soon can you get here? No one can speak at a normal volume on the phone at parties, clubs, etc. Get it together, Hollywood. Party at unreasonably giant mansion owned by the dick popular kid whose parents are never home cliche. Lacey waited until that moment to get startled and say, who's there? Also, she didn't lock the door in the first place. What the hell are you doing here? Uh... What Q is doing is more normal than what Lacey is doing. And then she stood on the couch and shushed the entire party and told them I have chlamydia. Lacey clearly has problems with association. She was upset that people only see her as a pretty face, but she ended up in the hot tub because her friend told everyone she has chlamydia, which doesn't have anything to do with how this conversation started. More convenient clues in unlikely places that Q just happens to be in. The page is ripped out of the book that way, so we know there was a page there that was ripped out. Why are they so scared of this hole still? Does Radar have mild amnesia? They know what is through the hole. They were there the other day. They are giving it their all and trying to set these two up to like each other, but I don't believe it for a second. If this is supposed to be some version of Wikipedia, Margot's quirky note wouldn't be there long enough for anyone to find it, unless she has impeccable timing. No, we gotta stop. I'm no, we're not stopping. Bro, you don't... Mm. Just think about something else. Rather than try to distract him, you could also pull over for literally two minutes to let him be. Longest urination scene in teen movie history. If he's still drunk, there's no way he wouldn't get piss all over that car. I'm the greatest! I shook up the world! Oh. Conveniently timed pothole. Why are we mission impossible in this trip to the gas station? He said they had six minutes, yet they are running around like they're already out of time. Are they all gonna get back in the car with four and a half minutes to spare? Remember that other movie based on the book written by that same guy everyone liked better than this one? Well, here's a guy from that movie. Even though there is a serious time crunch, let's all have cute looking around moments and then snap back into action. Mom, I'm sorry, it was super last minute. That was one of the few moments where an adult showed the slightest bit of concern in this movie. Without that, the moment with the teacher and earlier with the detective, I would be pretty sure this movie is a live action adaptation of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Q has a chronic issue with not looking at the road for very long periods of time when he is driving. We're three quarters of the way into the movie and this is the first time where that has become a problem. Q clearly hit his head and we see later that he is bleeding, but here we see Q looking exactly the same as he did before. It's gonna be a couple hours. All right. Radar's timetable has really seen a delay at this point, yet he is not freaking out about it like he was at the gas station. Maybe a near-death experience has taught him that prom really isn't that f***ing important. What was it you wanted to tell me back at Jace's house? before you puked yourself. What almost made her throw up, she now finds endearing. If you ask me, someone like Mara doesn't really deserve you. Only a nerd can swoop along and tell the pretty and popular girl that only a man like him can deserve her, as if she's a literal prize to be won. Please say that again. <laughs> You're really gonna make me say it again. Black Santa. The Black Santa thing isn't that funny. It's mostly dumb, and would worry me if I was his significant other that the dumbness is genetic. I told him. So Radar gets for telling his buddies, but it's clear the two girls gossiped about it enough to set up a wager. So what do they think? She's just gonna be waiting in this shed? For probably days? And now they're just gonna look around in the open field for a girl who isn't dead. No one suggested that they go to an actual nearby town because it would be ridiculous to just wait for her to show up here like she would miraculously know that her friends got all her clues and made this 22 hour drive. He should get that nose twitch checked out. And just as dumb luck would have it, Margo just happens to walk by the bus station right as Q is able to see her walk by. Yeah, I always leave clues, so you know I was fine. That is not why people intentionally leave clues. That's like having a scavenger hunt and being surprised if people find what they're hunting. I'm sure that most teenage runaways assume they'll be fine before they disappear. If she really wanted him to know she was fine, she should have said to him right after the night of criminal activity, I'm running away, but I'll be fine. And then I wouldn't have had to watch this movie. I'm just as selfish as she is. I have no idea who I am. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here? Up until that last thing, she was making sense. But I have to say, there are plenty of people that don't know who they are and still don't selfishly abandon their friends and family to figure out who they are. The myth of Margot Roth Spiegelman. If I hear someone say her full name again, I'm going to start assuming that in the grand tradition of John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald, she assassinated a president. A paper town for a paper girl. Annoyingly thin metaphor aside, she's not even in the paper town. The paper town is Aglo, which is where Q went. They are now in Roscoe, New York, an actual town. You were my first partner in crime. I wanted you to be my last. Let's add user to the big board of negative Margot attributes. Everybody else is doing things for the last time, but I was doing them for the first. Is this movie an adaptation of Q's college essay? And even though Margot totally manipulated Q and was generally kind of jerky to him, they still shared this passionate kiss. You could come with me, you know. You can't imagine how many times I dream 
he would say those words. But in this moment of clarity, Q realized that he doesn't want to be homeless also. How was he able to make it back in time to make it to prom? I'm supposed to believe that he was able to leave upstate New York and go on a 22-hour bus ride and prom would still be happening? Or do they have a weird prom that starts at 6.30 a.m. the next day? Someone else said she's on the West Coast teaching surf lessons in Malibu. And I say she's panhandling in a rural town in upstate New York. Is old. This forest is old. Very old. Tommy. That's a big thing. Tommy, 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 Tommy. You always say that, the same thing every time. I'm through, never again, too dangerous. I know, that's why I always say I'm always right, too. But you forget about it in a day or two? Yeah, well, the days of me forgetting are over. The days of me remembering have just begun. Would you look at this fucking town, man? It's dead. Imagine how many people out there right now are fucking man. <laughs> My head together. Just going at it. What do you say we get out of here? And I go put a baby in you. Whoa, hey guys, look. What? There's something in Margo's window. Has that thing always been there? I don't know, the shade's never drawn. <laughs>